I got a call about 3 o'clock in the morning to respond in patrol uniform. It was May 17, 1974, South Central Los Angeles. A little old lady comes up and she says, are you looking for all those white people with guns and ammunition? It was the clue that broke open a nationwide mystery. It was a yellow house with white trim. That led to the biggest shootout in LA history. Because there was such a volley of fire, it scared the hell out of me. What happened next actually took root months earlier, hundreds of miles away in the Bay Area. There's been a big kidnapping on the West Coast. The victim is Patricia Hurst, the daughter of newspaper executive Randolph Hearst and a granddaughter of the legendary William Randolph Hearst. It was February 1974 when the Symbionese Liberation Army, a self-styled militia, kidnapped publishing heiress Patricia Hearst, a crime that captivated the nation and took an even more shocking turn when Hearst joined her kidnappers. I'm beginning to feel that the FBI would rather that I get killed than safely released. I have chosen to stay and fight. Hearst next showed up on a San Francisco bank surveillance video, participating in a robbery armed with a semi-automatic weapon. With the $10,000 they stole, the SLA headed to Southern California, where they shot up an Inglewood sporting goods store. In a bid to get survival supplies, the getaway had gone bad. And the community at that time was about 95% black. And they offered up all kinds of information to our detectives. Information that led police to 54th and Compton and to the yellow house with white trim with the intriguing possibility that Patricia Hurst might be inside. Al Preciado and Ron McCarthy, retired LAPD colleagues, directed the on-scene SWAT response that day 40 years ago. You can see Preciado at the base of the front steps, close enough to hear the SLA leader talking inside. I could hear Sin Q giving orders to his people, a lot of profanity, saying that we're not going to give up. There was about 26 commands given to them to surrender. The lieutenant fired several rounds. They opened up with gunfire that was unprecedented in, in Los Angeles police history. I got no back here, they're in the way! It was just so, so uh, loud and so many rounds at one time going off, it sounded like a bed sheet being torn and being ripped and they had fully automatic weapons. They converted semi-automatic weapons to fully automatic weapons. LAPD had semi-automatic. We had semi-automatic rifles. So you're really Shotguns at a disadvantage. Shotguns and too. a 38 revolver. Police deployed tear gas. A lot of the tear gas grenades that were being tossed would bounce off the window and it would roll down to my feet. And I was trying to kick them away from me. The overpowering amount of tear gas filled the air and sickened everyone. I can't. Man, I know how you feel. Law enforcement soon realized the SLA members inside the house were determined to fight to the end, with people in South LA trapped in the middle. Don't cry, don't cry, Lord. don't cry, kid. As far as I can determine, and you've got as close as I have. Look out there. That's bad, that's bad. It was one of the first live-breaking stories broadcast on television using then new technology. The shootout attracted thousands of spectators. So we had 19 SWAT members and what? 500 officers. patrol officers, yeah. But the LAPD firepower was quickly depleting. We ran out of ammunition. And uh, so we ran he out had... of ammunition? Oh, yes. I ran out of ammunition in five minutes. Oh, my. I think Albert fired more rounds than anybody. <laughs> and uh, uh, I think he had 594 rounds. Law enforcement decided to throw more tear gas into the house, which touched off the large amount of ammunition inside. Chemical agent smoke is white. When we put the chemical agents in the back, black smoke came out. Fire erupts. Police were surprised to receive return fire even as the house erupted in flames. They had 35 millimeter film cans with C4 fused and they threw those out because we'd hear bo -pum. The chopper is overhead observing the fire is raging. Eventually, the house was engulfed in flames. The obvious conclusion is that the Los Angeles police have indeed found the nesting place of uh, the Symbionese Liberation Army, and there's not much left of it now. There's not much left of it now, Bob. Uh... When did you know then that it was done? 
The two house hours, was collapsing right? on itself. Okay. The standoff lasted two hours. Six SLA members died. Police estimate that over 9,000 rounds were fired by the police and the SLA. In the charred remains of the home, law enforcement found rifles, pistols, and shotguns, but no Patricia Hurst. Hurst was not in the house during the shootout. She was eventually captured 16 months later, hiding out in Northern California. She'd served two years in prison for her role in the SLA. Four decades later, it's a moment etched into LA history. After 40 years, looking back, what does this mean for the city of Los Angeles? The fact there were no citizens injured, there were no police officers injured. And our unit was a very fledgling unit that didn't have a lot of equipment, did not have a lot of training, and yet were successful because of the teamwork and we could still survive and do this job without getting anybody injured.